when they released me from prison and I came back to the camp here, the hardest thing for me to get used to was walking freely without anybody chasing me back into a cell. Even when I walk from this place to that place, I feel so strange. <laughs> I still cannot believe it. There are many things one would expect a man newly released from prison after years in detention to find strange about freedom. And there were many things that Kaidi Aji found jarring. But what he found most uncomfortable was walking freely, without restraint, with no one hustling him back into a cell. Kaidi Aji was one of the men detained by the Nigerian army in 2015 on suspicion of being a Boko Haram terrorist. He was finally released without indictment, but now faces displacement. He, alongside his wife and children, had crept out of their village at 2 a.m. to begin their journey to Meidoguri, the Borno state capital, which had become the safest place in the terrorism-ravaged state. We left the village at 2 a.m. on the dot. We couldn't leave in the daytime because they would find you and kill you. In the night too, you have to be going and hiding. We traveled for three days. When we arrived, five of us were men. Women were at least ten. The soldiers intercepted us and said they did not trust us, that we looked suspicious and that they had to take us to another military barracks and keep us for two weeks for interrogation before they would allow us to go. He did not know where this next facility was or how long they would spend there, but instinct told him that it would not be a good place for his family. So, he pleaded that his family be left to go to the IDP camp. I went to one of the senior soldiers and I said, Oga, I want to ask for a favor. I told him I had one of my wives who had two children and another wife who had four children and that he should help me and allow them to stay at the Muna camp. I said I would go to the barracks where they should allow our wives and children to stay. After several back and forth, the soldier agreed. The women were released to leave for the Muna garage displacement camp. Kadim and the rest of the men were gathered in a car and driven away. It was the last time he would see his family for the next six years. They took us to sector two, and that's where we were interrogated. After 24 hours, they transferred us to Giva Barracks. That was how they pushed us into a cell. I can't even count how many of us were there. We were more than 230. Life was miserable. There was no place to sleep or lie down. There was no toilet. Just a bucket at the corner. There was no privacy. We got food three times a day, but water was not available. They gave us half a cup of water every day in the afternoon. After nine months of living in this condition, he was transferred to the Borno Maximum Security Prison. They took us to Maximum Prison. That was where we spent five years. Life was easier there. There was space in some cells, if you are lucky. In the Maximum Prison, we thought about home a lot because the problems there were a bit bearable. After five years, Kaidi Aji was finally released with no indictment. However, he remains unsure of what to do with his life or how to begin earning a living. Before all these, he was a gold merchant. Now, he has lost everything, but he remains hopeful. I was filled with joy when I saw my wives and kids. I was grateful to the officials that let my family stay back at the IDP camp in Muna. I came back and saw my children doing well and in good health without any problems. It was a happy moment. There was a time at the maximum prison that I thought about them a lot, especially when I ate food and had water to drink. It will come to me that maybe they had not eaten, maybe they were suffering. I thought about my seven children that I left behind. In those three months that their thoughts invaded my mind, I would not eat the afternoon food we were served. I drank pap in the morning, then supper in the evening. But with God's will, 
I came back and found them doing okay. 